Hello, my name is John Muskell, Director of JM Coastal. Welcome to this e-learning course on modelling coastal flood risk. Today we're at Blackpool Seawall, part of a multi-million pound regeneration project of Blackpool Promenade. The seawall that you can see behind me is part of a 3.2 kilometre stretch designed to reduce coastal erosion and reduce the risk of flooding to both homes and commercial properties such as hotels and shops that are essential to the tourist infrastructure of Blackpool. Sea defence projects such as this one are often a compromise between reducing coastal flood risk, cost and in a seaside resort like Blackpool creating something that is both aesthetic and doesn't reduce access to the waterfront. The seawall is designed to dissipate incoming wave energy by causing the waves to break with a recurving wall designed to reflect wave energy back out to sea. Sea walls such as this one should be designed so that at high water, including an additional storm surge component, the still water level should remain below the crest of the defence, so that it still can be effective in dissipating and reflecting wave energy to prevent or reduce wave overtopping that can cause coastal flooding. As you can see today, conditions are relatively calm and the sea wall is not being called into action. However, this has not always been the case. Since its construction, there have been incidences of flooding along the seafront. High water levels due to storm surge reduce the effective freeboard of the seawall so that waves can overtop easily, causing coastal flooding. Any seawall will be built to withstand so-called design conditions. This can include retaining structural integrity under overflow conditions or wave attack and overtopping. However, this aspect will not be covered in this course. The design conditions could be specified as a water level or wave height with a particular return period. For example, the height of the defence could be related to the 1 in 200 year return period water level. For people not familiar with return periods, that is not to say a water level or a wave height that would only occur once every 200 years, but a water level or wave height that has a 0.5% chance of occurring in any given year. But wait, what about large waves and small water levels, or small waves and large water levels? Or in the worst case scenario, large waves and large water levels occurring at the same time? Large waves are not dangerous if low water levels cause them to break far away from the shore, and similarly, high water levels do not present a flood risk if they remain below the crest of the defence and there are no waves. Therefore, not only do we need to know the probability of certain water levels and wave heights occurring, we need to know the probability of different combinations of waves and water levels. It is the chance of these two variables occurring together that we need to know whether a certain defence design is going to be effective in defending against coastal flooding to a certain design return level. Because large waves and high water levels are usually driven by the same storm, it goes without saying that if there is a large surge, there is a high chance that the waves will also be large. In other words, these variables are correlated to a certain degree, and this degree of correlation is important to take into account when, cal when calculating their joint probability. One of the things that you'll learn on this course is how to calculate the probability of extreme water levels and extreme waves but also calculate their joint probability. But why take this course? This course covers nearly all you need to know to carry out a coastal flood risk study from start to finish. This includes accessing, analysing and cleaning the data, carrying out statistical analysis on historic or reanalysis data, developing a coupled coastal flow and wave model to simulate your design conditions up to the defence line, implementing empirical formula to calculate overtopping rates at the defence line and simulating inland inundation and developing coastal flood maps. Not only will you learn to carry out a full study, but as you go through the course, you will get access to all the tools and software you need to carry out a coastal flood risk study. All these tools will be open source and completely free to use again and again to carry out further similar studies and therefore potentially you could save you or your clients thousands. 
All the software that you will learn on this course and the tools that you will have access to are listed in the course notes. This really is a complete course to set you up for carrying out coastal flood risk assessments.